Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Matthew from ALM Busy Circuits, and I'm here to give you a quick overview of our new upcoming Eurorack module. Um, it's called the ASQ1. It's a novel sequencer with a number of different sequencing modes. It has uh, two CV gate outputs. It has a quantizer, and it has four trigger outputs. All of these sequencing modes uh, play simultaneously and uh, synchronize to an internal clock or an external clock. Um, programming the sequencer all happens with these mechanical keyboard, <laughs> mechanical computer keys. Um, they're also used, they have LEDs inside them to kind of represent both uh, sequence position info and note info, and they're used slightly differently on each mode. Um, the ASQ1 was intended to be uh, kind of like a simple, easy to use, easy to pick up sequencer that's kind of fun for just uh, sort of banging stuff out, jamming, and playing live. Uh, it's not meant to be kind of like a super complicated door type sequencer, you know, um, although it's, it, is, it is pretty capable. Um, I'm gonna quickly run through uh, the various modes and how to use them and what it does. And then uh, my coworker Zach here is gonna do a small performance uh, centered mainly around the ASQ1. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the ASQ1 has various modes. You just press the mode button to cycle between the modes. You can see that, I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but uh, I'm going through the various modes and now I'm on the CV gate mode and pressing the keys should play a note. That's a lot louder than me. I don't know, maybe I'll. Um, let me just take that down a bit. So I've just got the CV and the gate packed up, patched up to a Tyso Deco, like a, with a voltage per octave input and the, the trigger input, so it's like a very, very simple voice. Um, if I want to program in a pattern, I just, oh yeah, it's worth saying as well that the, it's, a, it's a step time sequencer, so it's basically the kind of sequencer that you'd find on like an SH-101, but with a lot of kind of added bits, but hopefully not too much, so it's still very playable and quick to pick up and, and fun. So I'll program in like a, like a simple arpeggiated sequence. I just uh, press the store button, and then I, I, I press the notes I want for each step. And you can see the red LED here that shows me the length of the, of the pattern. So there, we've got an eight-step eight step pattern programmed in. I then press play. And so, so uh, and then while it's playing back, I can uh, transpose the sequence. I can also uh, add a divider to the clock to slow it down. Slow it down a little more. Speed it up again. I can also uh, program in sequences with uh, rests and holds. Uh, so I'll program in a sort of a more sort of baseline like pattern. I just drop the octave down. I hit the, these buttons here, set the octave. So here that's a bit lower. And I press the store button again, and then I just program a note there, a couple of rests, a hold, there we go, a nice simple bass line. I can also uh, 
programming uh, 303 style slides, so I'll do another little short bass line. But if I leave the key held and then press the next key, it will add a slide. So I just you can hear the little slide there. Um, so that's basically what you can do with a, a 101. And then we can do a, a few extra things. I'm just going to cover the basics. I can change the length. So I'm going to add an extra eight steps. So now I've got eight empty steps. Uh, but I can overdub. So if I press the store button, then while it's playing back, I can then overdub. So. And I can also clear notes as well. <clears throat> if I press the, the rest button, it will get rid of notes. Now, I can also save and load patterns. So by pressing the store button and holding it down, I press any note key and it will save the pattern there. So I'm going to save this pattern to that key. And then I can recall another pattern that's saved previously. I'm just hoping there is a pattern on this key because uh, I didn't check that before I did the talk, one sec. And you can hear the, the, the pattern's changed and then I'll load the previous pattern back as well. Um, and that is pretty much it for the CV gate sequencing. Uh, just pause that and I'm going to mute this output. And then I'm going to show you the quantizer. So you can see I've switched on to quantizing mode, and the, the keys now represent uh, what I want the, the kind of incoming CV in here uh, quantized to. So at the moment, I've just got the, like a LFO coming out of the pip slope being attenuated, and then that's going into the voltage per octave input of a MCO oscillator. And we'll just have a listen to that. But what I'll do is I'll take that voltage per octave now and I'll run it through the quantizer and then patch it back into the MCO voltage per octave. And I'm going to quantize it to like a C and a G. And then we hear that again. This has to be playing. And then you can see it quantizing it. But it's, it's quantizing it across all five octaves. So I'm just going to slow it down so it's a bit more. And I can add, I can add some more notes. Um, and similarly to the other mode, I can it, it, it's it's quantizing on every clock pulse, but I can add a divider to that as well, so it all can slow it down further. Uh, just stop that, and that's pretty much the quantizer. I can also save and load the, 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 the kind of quantized, sales, quantized scales that I've set up. Um, the next mode is the trigger mode. These are just uh, each white key represents a step. And then if the LED's on, then it, it's a hit. So I'll just patch the trigger out into the squid. I've just got like an 808 kick loaded up on the squid. This is just going into the bass drum, so I'll just do like a 4-4, four, four, a basic 4-4 four, four pattern. And then I can also change the length. At the moment it's just 8 steps. I'll change it to 16. Uh, I can also divide that like with the other patterns. It's now going at half speed, back to one. I 
then go to another trigger and I'll add like a hi-hat. And then on another channel I can add like a, a clap. I can, I can change the, the length to be steps of eight, but I can also change it to be uh, like a, a, a non-division of eight, which lets me do like polyrhythms, that kind of thing. So you should see the, the hats now not sort of varying about on an odd number of steps. Uh, I can, I'll bring the old bass line back in. is pretty much it. Um, things I've for, uh, things I've not mentioned is uh, it has a USB-C on the slide on the side, which makes it really easy to update the firmware on it, just like with the MFX. Um, it also it appears as like a, like a drive when you hook it up to the computer and it means that you can also download the, in, the saved internal sequences and also load them back on, back them up. Um, also, all the patterns are, they, they're persistent between power cycles, so I can, I can turn this off, I'll turn it back on, and then with a bit of luck, There you go, that same pattern is there. Took a while for the squid just to come back there. Um, hope to, it's, the, the ASQ1 is in production at the moment. We hope to have it ship probably sort of late July, early August time. Um, we haven't quite figured out the price yet, but it will probably be around about sort of 300-ish. Uh, yeah, that's it. I don't know if anyone's got any questions or... I can't see anyone anyway, because it's very dark. <laughs> but I think now uh, Zach's going to do a small performance uh, using the ASQ1. Right. Thank you, every Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> OK. If anyone does have any questions, I'll be back at the stand after this and just sort of pop by and grab me. Thank you. Hello. I'm just going to do sort of from scratch, I'm going to make a track, essentially, um, basically displaying what Matthew just said. So.
Thanks. Uh, as Matthew said, any questions, just come by the ALM booth.